therapist. I've been a physical therapist for about 40 years. I have a special board certification as a therapist, as a, a board certified specialist in geriatrics. And I am also a Qigong master. So I started this, um, this trail with Qigong because I had seen so many people improve um, utilizing complementary medicine and stepping away from 100% Western medicine practice. So today I'm going to talk to you about Qigong. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started on the presentation. So the name of our, our program today is called Healing from the Inside Out. Um, it's a story of the practice of Qigong, the science, and ways to integrate the mind and the body. I've told you a little bit about myself. Um, as a practitioner of Western medicine, I went to medical school to be a physical therapist. And I know that Western medicine tends to have a one directional approach to resolving problems. And that one direction is dealing with the physical dimension of wellness. We get medications, as you have plenty of medications, I'm sure. Uh, with Parkinson's, we tend to opt towards surgical interventions. Um, traditional straight line exercises up and down and out to the side. Um, I am um, certified in the big program for Parkinson's and I've seen really great benefits from people participating in the big program. But there's so much more we can do for our different diseases that we that we have in our Western world. They say that only about 3% of all illnesses are truly based on something physically long, wrong within the body. And that the rest of them involve maybe a physical dimension, but many are closely related to disturbances of the flow of energy in the body which brings us to complementary medicine. Now, understand that I'm saying complementary, not instead of. These practices go along with your general practice with your physician. But complementary or alternative medical approaches um, provide a connection of the mind and the body, not just dealing just with the body itself, but with all of the different dimensions, physical, emotional, intellectual, social, spiritual, and vocational parts of our total body wellness. So as I talk to you about Qigong, recognize that this is this practice is about 4,000, 5,000 years old. Um, I'll explain as we go along that it really started from observations of animals and the way that our world functions and that the practices are things that you can do on your own. As someone who has suffered with um, significant injuries through my life, I had serious back injury uh, 27 years ago, right after I had my daughter that sort of put me on the sidelines of physical therapy practice for a little bit. Um, I had Sjogren's disease, um, fibromyalgia, all kinds of different problems that have been resolved through the use of Qigong. And, and I can tell you that it isn't a quick fix and it's not a drug that you can take and it'll resolve the problem right away. But these are ways that we can live our lives um, and help improve the, the health that we experience. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about COVID briefly. I feel like a turtle. How about that? In this COVID environment, you know that turtles thousands of years ago didn't have two shells. 
the turtles originally only had the shell on the belly. They didn't have a back shell. The back shell developed from the fusion of rib bones within the body of the turtle, and it made it more efficient in digging in the ground and also a external complete protection from the outside. So a turtle, we think when the turtle sticks his head out that he's, you know, checking it out to see if everything's okay and he pulls his head in, but that's really a mechanism for swallowing. And those of you who have difficulty swallowing know that often a chin tuck will help you swallow. So the same thing is true with the turtle, but I feel like COVID has really made a lot of us develop an external shell we didn't have before. It has caused, you know, none of us are used to wearing masks on our face. That's a section of the shell. We get depersonalized because half the time you can't recognize even people you know because they're in a mask. We have fear of illness. So not only knowing that you have a pre-existing condition, but also the fear of the additional Ill illness that you're being told can be fatal. Um, misinformation. We're uh, being told that if you have a certain blood type, you have a natural immunity to the disease. But then the following week, they say, no, that's really not true. Um, if you've had it before, you're immune to the disease. Well, no, that only lasts for a certain period of time. So none of us are really getting what we feel is a straight story on um, this illness that we're all in hiding from. Um, and I know those of you who have enjoyed our classes with um, DAPS have been experiencing isolation from maybe a fear of attending group classes or initially not being able to attend at all. I remember in March being one of the few people on the road with my letter from my company certifying that I was an essential worker. Otherwise, we weren't really supposed to even be on the road. So we have come a long way, but still we need to recognize those restrictions that we've placed on ourselves, but are also being placed on us that limit our ability to get out and do some of the things that we were doing to um, for our wellness, for the Parkinson's disease. Um, I haven't gotten brave enough to go to a gym yet, and I'm sure most of you haven't either. So many of the things we're gonna talk about today are things that you can do absolutely on your own. This picture, there's no water when the well is empty. Well, I want to tell you a little story. One of the first recognized stories about Qigong has to do with a little girl in China and her family. They had a deep well in their backyard that had just a little bit of water in it. And the invaders were coming from another country and the family had to get away from their farm to escape. And so they knew this little girl's health would not allow her to go with them. And so they lowered her into the well with just a little bit of water in it, thinking, we'll be back in a couple of weeks and she'll be fine. She'll have water to drink. Covered up the well. They left. Unfortunately, it was eight months before they were able to return. And when they opened up the well, they thought for sure the little girl would, would have died by now. They opened up the well and she was not only in the well and alive, but she was healthier than when they'd left her before. So they got her back out and they said, what did you do? And she said, well, I, there was a turtle that was in the well with me. And I observed how he ate the air and he would stick his head out. He would gulp air, pull his head back in and chew on it and swallow. And she said, I started doing that along with drinking the water, and I feel fine. I feel healthy. Now, I can tell you after studying 
through the years with different gurus from India and um, from China. I know many of these people who go in to pyramids for a month at a time and they have no food or water. They survive fine. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it for years and years. But the point is that in experiencing and visualizing the way the world works, we can then recognize how our body can work if we allow it to work that way. We are designed to heal ourselves, but our culture is in such a hurry and we're under such stress that we tend to be in a continuous flight or fight type of response. Everything's a hurry. Um, this causes the release of adrenaline and cortisol and other hormones that are released into the bloodstream that result in inflammation and result in health problems in and among themselves that are simply developed from that stress and that fight or flight. Now we're gonna talk a little bit more about this, but I want you to recognize kind of how you feel going into this second day of education. Notice if you feel a little uptight, if you feel a little stressed, if you're on edge, any of those things, take a scan of yourself and see how you feel. And then we're gonna do a couple of Qigong practices and you can judge for yourself if you feel any change. So the science of Qigong is a part of traditional Chinese medicine. People say it's 5,000 years old. I'm not sure how we know that to be true. Um, I'm more comfortable saying, you know, three or 4,000 years old. The point is, it's old, all right? And this is not something that um, was developed in the last 10 years. This is something that our science in the last 50 years has started to identify as not only being valid, but there is a tremendous amount of research that shows of the positive benefits of this practice. So I'll talk to you a little bit about that too. I am on the research committee for the National Qigong Association. These are Qigong practitioners throughout the United States, but also throughout the world. We review research articles that are developed by not only um, Qigong practitioners, but by practitioners of Western medicine, nurses, doctors, pharmacists, and physical therapists like myself that have done research that show that these practices are of benefit. Qigong is the umbrella. I always say it's the umbrella under which the martial arts sit. So Tai Chi, Kung Fu, all the martial arts, acupuncture, medical Qigong, to some degree, um, chiropractic, certainly acupressure, Reiki, um, energy-based practices all fall under the umbrella of Qigong. Qigong means making energy work. Qi is energy and Gong means making it work. Now, these are just some funny pictures here for you, but I want you to recognize that a bone when we look at a bone right here, most of us think, especially around Halloween, that this is just a part of a skeleton. It keeps all the skin together and the muscles. But I want you to think down inside that bone, how there are cells that are working inside the bone. When you hear of a bone marrow transplant, that's this inner part of the bone that is being transplanted. And why is it being transplanted? Because the existing bone marrow is not doing its job. It's not creating all of those cells that are extremely important for our immune system to function. Red blood cells, white blood cells, all of the different um, blood cells that are necessary for the immune system to function 
your bones are a very important part of your body and they're working for you all the time. Now, where does that energy come from? Think about that. Where does that energy come from? When nerve cells are working and we learn in biology that there is a, there's an impulse at one end of the nerve and it travels down the cell body and down through the nerve cells and then chemicals are released out of the ends of the nerve. Where does it get the energy to do that? When you go get an EKG or an EEG and you have those electrodes that are placed on your chest and perhaps around your head, where's that impulse coming from? Think about it. Are you plugged into a socket? You're not. You're born with that energy. When I ask people, where does the energy come from? Well, we're taught in Western medicine that it comes from a node in the heart, okay? It comes from an electrical node that creates an impulse and that creates the energy and the heartbeat. But where does that energy come from? And it has to come back to the division of cells before we're ever born. When those cells begin to develop the creation of energy as cells break apart and form new cells, creates more energy, and you have that energy in the body. Energy moves through a predictable pattern that we identify in traditional Chinese medicine as meridians. If you go to an acupuncturist, they will put needles into different spots or, you know, if they practice acutonics um, with um, tuning forks, uh, when we do that, we use the vibration of tuning forks to create or release the energy in those meridians. But any of those treatments help to connect that, that flow of energy moving through the body. So I hope that the visuals here help to make sense of where that energy come from, comes from. As I said, as all of these different parts of the cells break apart and build new cells and new cells, and all of a sudden we become this marvelous creation with multicellular millions and billions of cells that are organized and they know what they're doing, recognize that that energy has to go somewhere. And that energy is what keeps us moving. So the keep moving logo is perfect because we want to do is keep energy moving. All right, so this is a picture of the double helix um, of our DNA. And there's research now that the practice of Qigong helps to change the encoding in the DNA to actually improve your function. So how does this all work? Well, Qigong involves moving, sound, and breathing. So I want to start with the breathing. And I want you to recognize that your mind follows your breath. So remember when I said kind of take a scan and see how you're feeling? We're going to do a simple practice. And I'm going to stay right here so you can see the, the slide because this just involves breathing. So I'm gonna use my hand and my fingers to show you the counts. We're gonna breathe in for one, two, and then we're gonna breathe out for one, two, three, four. Now, if you find yourself short of breath and you can only breathe out for two each time, try to take a little deeper breath so once again, pay attention to how you're feeling. And here we go. We're going to take that deep breath in. One and two. Breathe out. Four. One, two, three, four. In two. 
out four. In two. Out. In two. Out. Let's try to increase it to five. In two. In two. And out. Six. Two. One more time. Out. Now just take a scan of your body. You feel more relaxed? Whenever you have a time of tension or stress, come back to this practice. Just breathe in for two as deep as you can, blow out through the mouth like you're blowing through a straw, Start with as many as you can on the out breath. Try for four. Breathe in for two, out for four. A very simple exercise that will help to calm and relax the body. Let's move to another one. This is called raise the earth and lower the sky. So it's very easy to practice you're just gonna lift up with the palms up like you're picking up the earth, breathing in. Gather the sun, exhale, bring that sunshine down, warming up the body all the way down to the belly as you breathe out. Let's do it again. Big inhale, lift and out. If you've done the big exercises, breathe in big. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Do one more. And breathe out. Great. This last exercise is very, very simple. You just sit in your chair. Watch my shoulders. We're going to start on the left side. So for you, that's going to be this side. So I'm going to mirror you. So you start on your left side. So take a breath in. Now just drop that shoulder, drop it as far as you can. See my shoulder drop and then relax. Breathe in, drop the right shoulder and relax. If it helps you to put your arm down to your side and reach for the floor to drop your shoulder. Breathe in. Now drop the left side, stretch that arm down. And relax. If I stand, you can see my shoulders a little better. Breathe in. 
And now exhale, drop and reach on the right side. Breathe in, exhale, drop on the left. Breathe in and drop on the right. Breathe in, exhale, drop on the left. Breathe in, exhale, drop on the right. Good, now back to the center and let's circle that left shoulder back. One, two, three, and the right side, one, two, three, left side, one, two, three, right side, one, two, three, left shoulder, one, two, three, right side, one, two, three, now both shoulders, one, two, three, and now shake your hands and circulate that energy all through the arms. What you'll probably feel is the same thing I feel, which is a big relaxation in the neck and shoulders because we've opened up the flow of energy through our neck and shoulders, which is where a lot of us carry that tension with our shoulders shrugged, you've got to learn to drop them. And it's not that easy. People say, drop your shoulders. And you're like, well, I can't really get them to drop. It's just like in the big program, you have to make it big. You have to really reach to get that shoulder to drop. You should feel it. Feel it pull in the shoulder when it's opening up. So let's look at the science, shall we? When you get into that autonomic nervous system loop, you end up in a fight or flight system. Now that system is called the autonomic nervous system. It's designed to get you able to run away from a bear. When we were cave people, we had real emergencies that we had to run from. Now, we tend to get that system activated at the least little thing and we get anxious and then we have that system activated and it raises your blood pressure, it um, increases inflammation, it makes you anxious. All of those things that are bad for our health. And we stay in a constant loop. The parasympathetic nervous system is on the opposite side. And it is the rest and digest system. It helps you to be calm. So here's a picture. You can see on one side, we have the sympathetic or the autonomic system um, over here that is dilating the eyes. It's dilating, it's tightening up, it's constricting everything. When we get the parasympathetic, it is opening things up. It's increasing motility. It's allowing your body to digest your food. It's allowing the heartbeat to slow down. It's allowing secretions to move through the body. This is what Qigong works on. It is stopping that autonomic loop. What I learned with Sjogren's disease is that turning on the parasympathetic nervous system helps to increase the flow of saliva so it's not missing anymore. Makes a huge difference. And the same thing is true with all of our other illnesses and diseases that are energy-based. So let's do a couple more things so you can see how this movement is so relaxing and helpful. So I'm going to lower the camera down a little bit and I'm going to stop the share for just a moment so I can be a little bigger for y'all to see. So I'm going to scoot my chair back 
Hopefully I'm not going to fall in the plant. And I'll move the camera down so you can see my arms. All right. So here we go. Let's start in a chair with your feet slightly apart. All right, so this is a practice of the 12 waves. Now we're gonna do the seated part. So here we go. We're gonna breathe in, bring your hands up and down. Bring the palms up close to you like you're pulling on your clothes. Breathe in, press out. Bring those hands in, breathe in. Make a wave. Bring your wave in. Relax down. Let's do it again. Inhale. Exhale. Breathe in. And out. Hands in. Breathe in. Make your wave, exhale, breathe in, relax down. Once again, up, exhale, breathe in and out, breathe in. Make your wave, exhale. Bring in the wave, inhale, exhale. Good. Feel relaxed in your shoulders. It helps to move all of that energy through the body. So I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen because I have this written down for you so you can practice it on your own. Now, we're gonna do another practice. It's called the Phoenix. This is gonna be a little bit different, but it's the same, same kind of thing where we're gonna have nice, easy breaths and movements. So it's kind of like flying. And when we do this standing up, you can make it a little more difficult so pressing the sky means we start with our palms facing up. So you're just going to breathe in, flip those palms over like you're actually lifting the sky. Breathe out. Take flight. Inhale. Exhale. Palms up. Breathe in. Exhale, press the sky. Relax the wrists like a big bird. Breathe in and out. Palms up again. Breathe in and press. Exhale. Take flight. Relax down. Let's do it one more. Lift, press the sky, all the way down, breathe in and out. Good. So you get the idea of how this kind of movement can help to move energy. The interesting thing, I had a lady last week on one of my virtual practices that had her Fitbit on and she texted me afterwards. She said, I wanted you to know I burned 375 calories during that class. And I thought, you know, I need to let people know that it burns calories. The slower you move, the harder it is. Now, roaring like a tiger helps to strengthen the lungs. And right now we're in the middle of flu season and um, all kinds of things. Now, I can't hear you roar, but you can hear me roar. So all we're going to do is just roar three times, but this can be a whole lot more fun if it's in a group. 
So I want you to just sit in your chair, bring your claws up, breathe in, and just a little roar. Breathe in. And as loud as you can. I think Mike's been with me in large groups where we've had over 300 people roaring at the same time. And let me tell you, it's quite the thing to behold. So roaring like a tiger, making those sounds helps to open up the flow of energy in your lungs and prevent you from getting sick. Let's do just a quick run through of some things that can help you in mitigating the effects of all the problems with our COVID world. Uh, this is my painting. I'm not an artist like some of you are, but I can tell you that tapping your creative side right now in all of this COVID and illness will help you with your physical, emotional, spiritual resilience. Whether it's photography, gardening, woodworking, coloring, painting, whatever. Do something creative. If you want to cook, that's great too. Anything that makes you creative will help to build resilience. There's a wonderful book that I would encourage you to read. It's written by Florence Williams on the three-day effect. The effect on heart rate variability, which is a, is a measure of your ability to withstand stress. In only three days, nature can have a significant effect on your health and on your ability to withstand stress. Even getting outside, even just for short periods of time. But the major effect is discovered if you spend three days in nature. So I encourage you to take a look at that book as well. This is my dad with the best activity director in the world. Laughter is indeed the best medicine. Many of you remember Norman Cousins and his book, The Anatomy of an Illness. And I can tell you that most of the folks that I've met with Parkinson's have wonderful sense of humor. Um, and it is, it's so important to laugh, especially right now when we have all these restrictions in our lungs, um, in, West, in Eastern practice, grief is the emotion that affects the lungs the most. And so it's important to laugh and do things that will make your breathing more effective. So anything you think is funny, watch it and enjoy it. Um, Norman Cousins had ankylosing spondylitis and he healed himself with vitamin C and the Marx Brothers. So um, be, be aware of the effects of laughter. A journey of 10,000 miles begins with a single step. This is a quote that I love because if you're gonna do anything, you gotta at least take one step forward. You have to care for yourself before you can care for others. So what can you do? Well, if you want to, you can join me for some virtual Qigong classes if you'd like to try it. Um, this is where you'd sign up. This is where you'd contact me if you have any questions. Please go back to the handouts and the PowerPoints that are on the website and practice those breathing exercises. Um, I am so happy I've been able to spend time with you today. I'm going to have to check my time. It looks like I'm getting real close to the end. But I want you to remember that um, Qigong means making energy work. And so when you have um, various illnesses or problems, a lot of times if you add a form of complementary medicine, such as Qigong to your practice with your traditional medical practice, you can have a significant effect on your health. Hi, Mike. Hi. I see you're back. Shall I yes. stop sharing? No, no, you're fine. I just wanted to make sure I was there. 
when you stop. So don't let me stop you. I will say I have been with you in uh, classes and been joining in today as well. So don't let me stop you. Great. Well, it looks like I'm at the end of my time. I think it's what, 145 or 245? 245, but you've got a few minutes. If, Great. If you want to wrap up with, but if you're through. I I'll would love to do one more thing if I could. Absolutely. Okay. So I'd like for everyone to just start shaking your hands. Shake and shake, 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 shake. You're going to shake for a while. It won't be five minutes, but it'll be 30 seconds. And so you're gonna have to shake, shake, shake. And keep shaking. Okay, now let's bring the hands together like you're holding a beach ball between your hands. Focus on the space between your hands and let your arms relax. Take a deep breath in through your nose and now blow up that beach ball between your hands. Just blow. Breathe in through the nose. And blow. Blow right between your hands. Breathe in. Blow out. Breathe in and blow. Inhale and blow. Breathe in and blow. Very lightly, just press the hands towards each other. Notice if you feel kind of a pressure between the hands. Now breathe in, bring your hands apart. As you breathe out, bring them closer together. Notice where you start to feel that pressure between them and then breathe in and out. Stop when you feel like you're pushing on something. And breathe in, breathe out. Stop when you feel the pressure between your hands and breathe in and out. There you go. Now rub your hands together, they'll be nice and warm. If you have any area that's painful, put your hands on that spot. You are feeding it with energy. So what you are feeling there is your own energy opening up and moving 